I'm always looking for ways to make things go slower. This episode's no different. Welcome back to the Skill Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. It's episode 66, yes, of What's on the Bench Weekly. And if you're not familiar with this show, it's where I take you through projects that I'm working on, things that are on the floor, on the bench, out in the other room, not even here yet, um, things that just arrived. <laughs> this is one of those weeks. And this is a pretty exciting development on the old Red Cat uh, COE hauler front. And here it is, uh, missing a lot of the bits and pieces. Obviously we've got the, uh, the whole uh, raising and lowering setup in there and uh, for laying frame, I think that's correct. <laughs> There's so many different terms. Um, but uh, what we've got here is something new. And my friend Paul from 110 Hobbies sent me a link to a video that he did where he added this new controller. And this is from Hey OK Performance. And Hey OK Al, as his name actually is, Al's been around for a long time making a lot of really cool stuff. He was the go-to if you needed a winch controller before all these winches just came with the controller built in. He did a lot of amazing stuff. He still does a lot of amazing stuff. And when the Red Cat Hauler came out, he instantly saw a reason to develop a new piece of hardware. And that is this servo slower. It's already been installed. It's this little guy right here. Uh, doesn't look like much, but when you install this between the two servos that are used for raising and lowering the hauler and the transmitter and receiver, you actually get a very cool way of slowing down the servos so it is a much more realistic motion now on the raising and lowering of the frame <laughs> when you're when you're when you're slapping frames when you're scraping asphalt dragging rails <laughs> regardless what this does is it slows everything down and there's also a separately sold sound unit available so you get the right sounds for this. Let me demonstrate. Yeah. The sound of a compressor filling up with air as it pushes the whole frame up. Now let's lower it. That's pretty cool. You can also vary the amount of speed on those servos, so if you want it to go faster, you can. Just by adjusting that like that. Now it goes up quite quickly. Probably too fast, honestly. If you want it to go slower, you adjust the pot in the opposite direction, and then it will go slower. That is very cool. And it really does add a lot more realism to the COE hauler than it had before. This is a pretty cool system and it's pretty neat that Red Cat developed it to do this. Obviously, you know, they're going after the low rider market uh, with their low riders and this for people who like to haul trucks around on the back of other trucks. But having that variance in speed now, making it much slower to me makes it so much more realistic and it's very, very cool. So that system is from Hey OK. Uh, there's the thing right there. Uh, I got mine from 110 Hobbies from Paul. Thank you very much for sending them my way. I will put a link in the description below where you can get one too. Apparently, Al developed this in like 12 hours. Made this whole unit, makes it possible. 12 hours from start to finish, from inspiration to execution. Very, very cool stuff uh, and uh, makes your hauler that much more realistic. Yeah, there we go. Speaking of, um, I should probably show off where I'm at with the body. Uh, this has, <laughs> it looks like garbage. No, <laughs> I intentionally uh, weathered this. I posted some stories about it on the old uh, Instagram and I think people missed some of my comedy. Uh, but that said, yes, this has definitely been weathered. Um, I had some inspiration that I saw online. I was like, yeah, I wanna make it look like that. So many layers of polycarbonate paint later uh, and this is sort of the look that we've got going on. And uh, I think it looks pretty good. It's, um, you know, 
it's unique. It's definitely interesting. Try and save hauling, I thought was a good name. Slightly inspired by The Simpsons. Um, but yeah, um, all of that's done with paint and uh, masks. And um, yeah, a little more work to do on it. Uh, I do have to dull all of the chrome and add some weathering to that. Uh, and then, um, yeah. That's probably about it, but uh, it's going to look pretty cool when it's all done. I, oh, jeez. I think it's going to look pretty cool when it's all done. I think it's going to look pretty cool when it's all done. Um, yeah, you can sort of get an idea of where that's going to sit, sort of like that. Oh, <laughs> of course, it's way too big for the frame again. Um, but yeah, there it is. That's uh, that's looking pretty good. We'll probably black out the wheels um, and maybe make this chrome bumper white. I think that would look kind of nice. And of course, get all those things patinaed as well. Don't let patina scare you. It shouldn't scare you. This is easy. This is very easy. I'll give you a quick rundown. Um, I This truck started as shiny and blue. Uh, I gave it a full coat of white. That was my first coat. Uh, and then I did just the hood portion here. Uh, I did a quick spray of black. And then I went over the whole thing with red. Uh, and that was multiple reds. There were two different reds that I used. Uh, and the idea there is to kind of vary the coloring. You don't want it all to be one solid red color and you don't want it to all be the same thickness of paint either. So you kind of vary where that paint goes uh, and uh, just kind of give it a sort of a muddled kind of look. Once that's done, don't let it dry for too long. Immediately start wet sanding it. Once it's, you know, once it's cured slightly, like, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes later, uh, after some heat gun application, you can start wet sanding. And I just wet sand to the point where I remove all the, the red and the black to get to the white again. And the same on the sides here, uh, just to get more of that black to show through. This piece was already black, so it just required some red. Uh, and then the same thing on the sides and the top and, you know, just kind of vary it. If it feels like it's getting to be too much, that's when you stop. Masked off the lettering, painted it with my airbrush, and then went back and wet sanded that as well to give it a weathered look. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. It's not difficult. Anybody can do this, trust me. If you want it to look bad, patina it. <laughs> Maybe not bad, weathered. <laughs> all right, one more kick in the can here. So cool. Tell me that's not the coolest thing ever. All right, very cool. Uh, all right, let's get the uh, hauler off the bench and move on to what's next. All right, speaking of polycarbonate paint, I also have painted up two bodies here. These are uh, respectively the Vanquish VRD Carbon and the SCX-10 Pro. Uh, now, these colors were inspired by Formula Uh liveries, uh, McLaren, and uh, what's this one? Uh, Aston Martin. Uh, I used all on point in Traxxas. Uh, actually, I think that's it. On, I think it just used on point. These are all on point paints. Uh, for those of you in the United States, uh, Traxxas makes the same paint, um, but it isn't in the same color range as on point. On point has a lot more colors. Hopefully Traxxas will bring all those out because uh, there are some very cool colors here that are a little harder to find. Uh, some of these light blues, uh, I don't think they're very common. This is a coyote body, by the way, uh, which I thought looked really, really good on the VRD Carbon. Um, the Carbon sits a bit taller, obviously, than the SCX-10 Pro because it is portal-based. Uh, but I'm really, really excited to see how both of these trucks perform against each other. Um, I'm going to take them out this weekend, do a little bit of running, uh, maybe even see a friend or two. So uh, that's sort of the plan there. Uh, I have to put the sliders back on because while I have been, I've been working on a prototype, something like it's a, yeah, <laughs> this is just a prototype, but the idea is I wanted to make uh, a 3D printed slider that um, also has the ability to have a metal rail on it to get some of those points. Um, this is just a proof of concept. Obviously, it'll have to be a lot beefier if it's going to actually hold up to any sort of actual running and abuse, but that's sort of the, the idea there. Um, it'll be a little while before these are ready, but hopefully uh, they'll be out soon. And I will add those to my Thingiverse page, so yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that's sort of how this one looks. Uh, they're all both, they're both sort of set up to be stock as they come out of the box. Uh, this one does have more weight on it. Um, 
get out of the way for a second. Um, but I just, you know, it was really more just about having some fun and doing some painting uh, in mid-November <laughs> outside. Because I don't paint indoors, I do paint outdoors. Uh, and um, tend to get pretty decent results. Uh, these turned out pretty good. I'm very happy with the look. Um, man, that this body is not Sorka legal. And you can tell just by looking at it that it's way too short. Uh, it almost looks like you're just running like a loaf of bread. A very small loaf of bread. Like a ciabatta or a focaccia. Maybe that's what we'll call this one. Anyway, very pleased with how the paint turned out. Um, it did uh, require a fair bit of thinking, not so much on this one, but to get the color right for that green, I did have to mix a few different colors together, and I think it actually turned out pretty good. Looks pretty nice. All the lettering was all done on the Cricut, of course. It's just so much easier. Uh, this one was all freehand, though. I didn't do any Cricut stuff on this one at all. Um, and uh, it actually turned out pretty good. I like the splatter. It's funny, uh, I get a lot more satisfaction out of painting polycarbonate than I do out of painting a hard body. And I can't really explain why that is. There's nothing really different about the process. Well, actually, the, pr the process for painting Lexan is a lot more involved and does require a lot more thinking. And I find that you can get results with this that you can't get with a hard body, at least not as easily. That axial body is so low you can actually sit the entire VRD carbon on top of it and the chassis doesn't touch the body. <laughs> what a comp body. What an illegal, illegal comp body. So I do get a kick out of it, even though this is the year of no Lexan. I managed to paint a lot of Lexan. <laughs> Keep your eyes peeled for some sort of video that will feature both of these trucks. Actually, all three, I'll add the Ascent uh, to that as well. And, We'll see how that goes. Maybe I'll throw some decals on that to make it feel like an F1 car as well. Okay, what else do we got? And speaking of painting hard bodies not being easy, I did get the masks ready for the Land Rover BRX02. Uh, this is going to be a expedition style truck uh, because of this great rack from Scale Garage System. I absolutely love it. Uh, I'm going to paint this lettering in some color. I think I might go like with a really dark burgundy. I think that would look nice with this sort of light green. Might be a good match. Anyway, uh, I won't spoil what the mask is if you happen to catch it in there. Good for you. Uh, but we'll have that on this by the next episode. So make sure to stick around for that. And then we'll get into weathering this one. Maybe we'll do a little weathering how-to. I like sharing that kind of knowledge, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Uh, be sure to, of course, hit the like button, and you can subscribe if you want, if you want to see more content like this, and more how-tos on what's on the bench, because literally that's what this show started as. All right, I think that's going to do it. Um, not a ton of stuff, but there's, you know what? I, I That's not true. There's always a ton of stuff going on here. There's always a ton of things. Um, so I think that's going to do it. Uh, we'll get uh, this one all wrapped up very shortly. I'm really looking forward to sharing this with you. I think it's going to be a fun one. And um, yeah, stick around. Keep watching the skis. See you on the next one.